the next four do constrain us. There's an assumption that in conventional solar you switch the pump off. That leads to stagnation in normal use. But our system does not stagnate in normal use. We have continuous pumping. There's another assumption that the highest pressures for test purposes are experienced at stagnation. This is not the case in our system. In our system, the highest pressures are at freezing point when water expands in, in flexible pipes. So the assumptions, the requirements of the test are inappropriate there. It also assumes that all polymers are organic, meaning they are chains of carbon in their molecular backbone. But Solar Twin does not have a carbon chain in its molecular backbone. It has a chain of silicon. And it also assumes that optimising a one-size-fits-all collector that you can fit on anybody's pumping, anybody's system, in isolation is the objective. But most people don't design panels on their own anymore. They try to design systems. Because if you design a panel on its own, you may end up optimising its efficiency but trading inefficiency somewhere else in the system, perhaps having high flows in the panel with big pipes which lose heat, for example. So we've designed our system as an efficient system. The collector is slightly less efficient, but we have low flows, and that means you have less heat loss from the pipes, because they're smaller. So we've got an integrated panel. So the last four points, stagnation, pressures at low, t um, pressures at low temperatures, organic materials, and the one-size-fits-all assumption affect solar twin. There are 10 durability tests in EN12975. There's five which are related to stagnation in their assumptions, and there are five which are not. Of the five that are related to stagnation, we're going to be looking at the exposure test 5.4. It's not appropriate for solar twin because of the continuous pumped nature of our system. Test 5.4 demands 30 days of high panel temperatures, including stagnation using a dry panel and not a waterproof one. And it's supposed to reflect the use of the panel, not a failure mode. So Arsenal modified the exposure test to make it appropriate to solar twin by still giving 30 days of high irradiances, but not including stagnation, by pumping the panel during daylight hours and keeping it water-filled but not dry. Because this reflected the use of solar twin panel in normal use, not failure mode. These are my words. Arsenal have done some more detailed wording. So our conclusion is that EN12975 needs to be modified to include Arsenal's test opinion and add to a second option for an exposure test. Here's the test trick. And the result was there was no major failure. In other words, it passed. It also passed the stagnation tests, which is the, uh, the briefer high temperature resistance test 5.3. So Arsenal approved our panel on the condition that it was used as we specified. Continuously pumped, pump on, heat export, not stagnation use for over temperature control. That is a summary of longer words that they used. So what's the summary of the European regulatory position concerning our panel? From Portugal, we don't know, because we're at an early regulatory stage. From the Irish Republic, the panel is approved for grants, thanks to evidence from Arsenal and TUV. In the United Kingdom, it's not approved for grants or for industry tax benefits, even after three months of waiting, and this is a problem. It appears that there may be needed to be some competition law action against certain government and standard setting agencies. And this may not just be in the UK. I hope this doesn't happen because it's very expensive and it doesn't win you any friends. So what innovations don't fit? Thermal step changes, low flows and variable flows. Both of these don't fit the quadratic equation formula for performance. Good looking at the durability issues. Panels that don't stagnate in normal use don't fit the standard. Polymer-based ones don't fit their pass-fail criteria, which are absolute. Systems with silicone rubber don't exist and systems designed for dedicated components or limited ranges of operation, like solar twin with its continuous pumping, aren't foreseen in the standard. And these problems are all polymer specific, because thermal step changes are likely to be found in polymer collectors because of the need to minimise peak temperatures. They're more likely to want to use thermochromics or vents to let air to cool the panel. Low flow systems may be linked to integrated polymers with PV frames, Systems that use heat export, again, are 
lower temperature, and that is suited to polymers. The pass-fail criteria work against polymers which are likely to move more, and the pass-fail criteria are absolute, not functional. Instead of saying the system should not be affected in performance, they say, in effect, the system should not move. Systems containing silica and rubber are non-existent. And panels as part of a dedicated set of components need to be taken into account because those dedicated components may reduce the range of operating conditions so that the standard doesn't need to be so harsh. So the performance test doesn't apply to step change and low flow. The durability test, not for all certain polymers, is only for systems that are routinely stagnated, um, not ours, and um, not for systems which have water and flexible pipes. The problem is that EN 12975 doesn't say any of these explicitly because the developments appear to have taken place without the standards known. So what to do? Well, there are four ideas we could do. There may be more. One is to do nothing. Innovation and innovators will lead. We can reduce the scope of the standards so it only fits what it was originally designed to do. That's a simple option, but what about panels like ours? Or we could increase the scope of the panel, perhaps using a matrix approach. For example, test 5.4 for exposure could have two options, as discussed today. Or we could start again. We could move away from a panel focus and move towards a system focus, looking at sustainability and performance instead. I hope this is of interest to you, and I hope that it raises questions and helps move things forward for innovators in polymers and solar thermal. Thank you from Barry Johnston at Solar Twin.